Welcome to the Connecting Community Initiative Joint Meeting with Select Board, October 17th, 2023, 7 p.m. Note the time change. It's not typically 6.30, and if the Select Board would like to open their meeting. I will call the meeting to order October 17th, 2023, at 7 p.m. in the evening. All right, and I call the CCI meeting to order at 7.03, 7.02. Okay. October 17th, 2023. Do you want me to read the hoo-ha? I would love for you to do that. <clears throat> la, 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 la. Okay. Certain meetings <laughs> normally held in municipal office being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, Master General Laws, Chapter 38, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Uh, meetings are recorded. It's not in the hoo -ha anymore, but meetings are recorded and uh, posted up on the town website. Well done, Lily. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Meeting guidelines. Speak one at a time. Follow a default code of conduct. Be respectful. Consider it courteous, concise, non-repetitive. Please raise your hand, whoever you may do it. Sometimes I don't see the yellow as much. <laughs> very good, <laughs> M.A. That's a very good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do a um, roll call. Uh, Jim Cambius. Gambia is here. All right. Julie Chalfont. Here. Here. Lily Dwight. Here. Tim Hilchi. Here. Here. Uh, Kate Lawless. I don't see her yet. Andrew Leapson. Here. Okay. I'm here. Trevor. Don't nope. see him. Annie Curtis. Don't see her. Carolyn Ness. Yes. Here. John Pachurk. No. And M.A. Swedland. Here. All right. Excellent. Oh, okay. Pam Predmore. Oh, and Pam Predmore's guest. Hi, Pam. Hi, Denise. All right. Okay. So um, let's see. Did everyone have a chance to read the minutes from September 12th? Any additions? Any? Make no? a motion. We approve them as presented. All right. And is anyone opposed? If not, the minutes go. Well, I around. second that motion. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? Any objections? No? All right. Then the minutes are approved from September 12th. And they're always available on our CCI website. Okay. In case, you know. All right. So committee updates. I'm going to start with that and start with, who should I start with today? How about MA? Oh, whoa. All right. Ooh. Are you ready? <laughs> sure. Why not? Okay. Um, uh, Energy Committee. Uh, we are waiting for the audit report on the uh, um, DPW building, on the elementary school, and on Frontier. Um, they have been done, and they are being reviewed by Eversource, who funded the project, and we are expecting expecting Eversource to finish that up in the next mm, three or four days, a week, whatever. So um, maybe those will come in soon. <clears throat> um, we have a meeting tomorrow night, so uh, not a lot of new news. Um, I think some of you are aware that the DPW decided that they needed to uh, take over how the aggregation program was run and they um, pretty much screwed up everything. Uh, so um, there's a lot of effort going in and letters being written by towns that are that already have aggregation, but they were going to grandfather and they were going to not grandfather people who already had it and change all the rules and and just generally make a mess of things uh and i haven't heard anything as far as i know that there were bills in the house and letters being written and all sorts of things from all the towns that already have aggregation i don't know what the result of any of that is um so that's not our DPW, that's like a state? No, it's a Department of Public Utilities, she means. Okay. 
Um, that's Sorry. the state, the state regulatory agency. Hmm. I, I think they were trying to be helpful, but not so much. Um, I think you said it very well. Um, Tim wrote a letter, a wonderful letter from us. The Tim Energy Tim. Committee wrote letters, yeah. both in support of the bill at, that was in the House and also to DP, DPU. Yep. Great. Thank you. Um, any questions? I don't think I have anything else. Okay. Well, thank you, Emma. Uh, next, how about Carolyn? Oh, um, well, the MVP program is um, we met once uh, just to figure out how we're going to get um, move forward with uh, MVP 2.0. And I'm very encouraged because um, Chris Nolan is going to work with um, uh, Chris Curtis and the some of the requirements for MVP 2.0 are going to be the same requirements for um, our renewal of our hazardous mitigation um, plan. Um, and we're hoping to do some of the committee work and meetings and renewal of that in conjunction with MVP 2.0. So we'll have a new updated plan. Um, we'll have in, hopefully more activity on the committee level. And um, we're going to work on our hazardous mitigation because that plan expires in 2025 and we need to get that in the system um, to MEMA to sign off on and then FEMA to, to sign off on. So, because uh, we're applying for a brick, brick grant, it just opened up. Um, so we're hoping to have, we have a meeting next week that for Pine Nook Road, um, we have about $1.3 million worth of additional work to do there. And um, hopefully we'll have a good application. Um, also, um, coordinating with other towns, there was the towns that had the July 10th storm damage. We had a little over a million dollars worth of damage along with several towns. Um, and then there was the July 21st, at which was really just Greenfield, Conway, and Deerfield. And then there's additional storms, um, September 11th, which was Worcester and, uh, I mean, Lemonster and, um, Fitchburg. So we're coordinating with them and hopefully get some money from the state. So we're looking forward to that. Um, the CIPC meets is meeting tomorrow. It's reviewing the articles that are on the town warrant. Um, I mean, there's not much you can do. The HVAC system is a couple hundred thousand dollars and seems to be way overpriced, but we have to have it um, because it's really unhealthy and not in compliance with requirements for the state for our cells and just our employees. So anyway, um, we'll do that tomorrow. Hey, Carolyn, is that the HVAC system for the police or for town hall or both? No, just the police building. Just the police. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Their, okay. their system is so, is freezes up. I don't, yeah. you know, can't do anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions for Carolyn? Nope. Okay. Ooh, moving right along. Let's see. How about Andrea? Sure. The Open Space Committee <clears throat> has been making some good progress. On the 4th, we met with the select board and we talked to the select board about five parcels of town-owned land in Deerfield, which is not permanently protected. And we talked about how we would go forward and permanently protect that, probably with the conservation restriction, which the town cannot hold because it owns the land. And the um, select board said, that's great. Go forth and do more research and please work on that. So we have uh, done that. And today the open space committee met with the Franklin Land Trust and they were fabulous, gave us incredible information and help. Incredible. Um, explained to us exactly what has to happen to get uh, conservation restrictions on 
parcels of town owned land, told us a variety of options, in, in, which include selling or giving some of that land to state um, uh, entities like uh, Fish and Game. And one of the pieces, uh, one of the parcels is right on the Deerfield River. It's a small parcel. Anyway, it just explained to us exactly how things need to happen and told us that they would be talking to the land trust to um, to further our, our goals of, of permanently restricting that land. We think that they need to, um, the two staff members will need to go back to the Franklin Land Trust and talk to them about what the Franklin Land Trust could do. They thought that it was completely in line with um, their interests in preserving um, land on uh, Pecomtuck Ridge. And so we were just really delighted and heartened by this meeting. So we think good progress has been made. They did warn us that it will take a while, that it could take years to get this whole process through. But now we have steps to follow to um, achieve this um, permanent um, protection and told us about grant opportunities to get money to do the due diligence we need to do to get um, the land permanently restricted. So we had said earlier, perhaps we would just go to uh, the CPC and say, hey, we could use this money. But apparently there are sources of grant funds within the state that could be used for these things. So we are going to, uh, I'll do research in the next month and then we will probably meet again with the Franklin Land Trust. So good news all around. Okay, uh, Tim and then Lily. Um, Andrea, I'm just curious. Um, the, did they explain why it would be advantageous to sell land to the state? And second question, um, if we don't sell the land, is one path quicker than the other path? So in terms of time, I have to say I do not know at all. They did say that the um, people working on conservation restrictions the I don't know what agency that is, but that things e go e e a okay Th that they are a little understaffed like everybody else, and things go slowly. If we sold the um, if we held on to the land ourselves, that means that as in we gave we uh, had someone local holding the conversation conservation restriction like the Franklin Land Trust. There is stewardship that has to happen. If the state owns it, the state is responsible for it. If the state owns it, they will not develop it. They will use it um, uh, as permanently, they will deem it permanently restricted. So there's this little patch, a five acre patch on the Deerfield River. It does not in any way uh, connect to the trail system that we are hoping to create. And so that's maybe a way of saying, okay, state, you take care of this small uh, portion of land right on the river. We talked about the fact that who knows, that patch could disappear given um, what's happening with rivers and storms. And maybe that's a good path. So one of the Franklin uh, Land Trust uh, em members, employees said she would kind of do a back channel talk to the um, fish and wildlife and see it, fish, no, sorry, fish and game and see if they are interested. Maybe we just gift it to them. And then again, our responsibility ends. Um, anyway, so that's a, that, that is one uh, possibility. And again, time frame, we were not sure about that at this point. Lily, okay. did you want to, is somebody else? Have I one? have two, two questions. Um, we, the first one is sort of built on Tim's is so what exactly is the is the only benefit of gifting it to the state that we do not have to pay for stewardship because you know they won't do anything but but yeah. then then it's not our responsibility yes that is that is that is that probably is a fair way of, of, of putting it um and just so you know in order to get a conservation restriction one has to do dil due diligence and that due diligence includes a res uh, uh, researching the title, certifying the title, 
surveying the land. All of that adds, and then getting our, the town council to look at all that and say, oh yes, that is good. Um, so that uh, that all costs money. If the Franklin Land Trust does uh, holds the conservation restriction, they ask for a stewardship, some, you know, can you give us a little money so that we can steward the land? The money that we would give them would be a one-time thing and they would, uh, they would uh, monitor it in perpetuity. And they do that already. So this um, sort of ties to my next question was um, putting on my CPC hat. Do you anticipate coming to CPC this year um, and I would just suggest that there are going to be many demands on CPC. So if you think you're going to need something like um, surveying funds, and, and it would be better, be better to apply, get grants that cover it and then don't use it, than to, than to not have the ability to do it. And, and I wonder, Tim might know this, if CPC money could be used for that um, stewardship gift to land trust, I don't know. Right. So, so just so you know, um, the title search, the certification, and the surveying are all done by different professionals, and uh, the Franklin Land Trust deals with them regularly. Um, woman we spoke to from the Franklin Land Trust is going to put feelers out to see whether there are surveyors uh, who have time and what they thought the price would be, uh, the certifier and what that price would be. But, so they just have all this um, experience and expertise, Franklin Land Trust does, that can help guide us in, um, in doing this. And they're the ones who told us about the fact that there is something called the EEA land grant, which is a Massachusetts based agency that gives money for title search, certification, surveying. So we are all in the next month, we're all going to be doing research on this EEA land grant uh, so we can figure out um, what it might cost so that if we had to come to the CPC, we would have some numbers. Well, we're doing so our, we're doing our research. Okay. So, Andrew, I've got a question. So you're talking about five acres of parcel right on the Deerfield River. Do you know where, the, you know, I'm, I'm just concerned there's such limited access. You know, I used to be able to go down the road and, you know, an eighth of a mile and go swimming at Red Rock until we had this, these horrible people move in. Yeah, that's a long story. Um, and still water is like, oh, you know, just crowded, horrible people from all over. I mean, we find other ways, but where is this particular parcel? And I'm concerned about handing that over to the state and not having access. Well, if we had, if you, if the state owns it, it's uh, open to the public, completely okay. open to the public. Okay. So that's, that's cool. thing one. Um, thing two is we had some, uh, some confusion about where this piece of land is. I thought I knew, uh, Julie thought she knew, um, they're going to do the Franklin Land Trust brought us maps. They're going to do a little more research. We believe it is right across, right across the road, right across Mill Village Road from Child's Cross Road. Oh, okay. So, yeah. it's, so I think yeah. it is the area where I think uh, Trout Unlimited has a sign yeah. and there's a bench. That's what I think the land is. Other people I mean, thought it's, it was a, a, it's a, like a sliver, right? Yes, it's yeah. a sliver. Yeah. And it's, um, yeah. So, so it's uh, the important thing is to have it protected. It it will not connect in any way, shape, or form to the trail system we're hoping to do. So maybe this would be a good piece to say, hey, state fish and game. Since people are fishing from that area, it is not a place generally where people launch boats, tubes, or uh, or kayaks. Yeah. Um, so, so. Tubes. so yeah, so so it's, it it's, it seems to be a place where people are uh, are fishing. So anyway, um, to to be um, to be continued. The other interesting thing is that um, there are four parcels that we're talking about that are on Pecumtuck. Three are contiguous and close to Eaglebrook, you know, near my house and 
to Eagle Brook. And if we if we did a conservation, if we did one con con <laughs> conservation restriction on all of that, we would only need one survey, one certification, one title search. So that would could reduce the price uh, or the cost, the expense for um, for this, as opposed to doing each parcel separately. Okay. So okay. to you know to be uh, to be researched a little more. Okay. Carolyn, you've got your hand. What happened I, to there? I, I just wanted to say that that part, the <clears throat> five acres, is where the berm blew out um, in Irene, and um, it, it's it's hard to get to. Actually, mm -hmm. you have to go over a private property to get to it. So um, it's not necessarily a great piece of land, um, but somebody might want to rebuild the berm at some point from from. Right. A, a, Kind of thing. Or it might be a good, a good, a very good candidate to say, "Hey, fish and game, fish and fish and game. How'd you like this piece? You take care of it now." Um, and so it, w that will be well, that, one of the that, things that you should do is um, uh, make a priority list so that you could split it up so it's the cost is um, sure. over three or four years. Just from a budgeting point of view, I'm sure Julie is is already thinking about that, but. Um, mm -hmm. It's to do it all at once is really hard because again, it's not a normal expense, but um, if you break it up in a priority, <clears throat> what you want to do, like the trail system one should probably be a top priority. Well, um, so, so the first thing is protect this land. So it's permanently protected that we, that we know. The second is to get grant monies to do this work. And yep. so that is, that, that is a very high priority for the um for the committee you should you should know that's good right. okay. okay thanks good. Andrea. that's that's a lot it's a lot of news some yeah. good news <laughs> okay how about jim what's okay. up jim what's up at the library um so um I, I actually got like some some briefing points for this meeting um i asked what the status is of the contracts for construction and according to Candace, the request for proposal should be going out next month, we hope. Um, the date for when construction would start, obviously, will depend on what the contractors who respond to that request for proposal say. So it's sort of out of our hands, but we're, you know, the, the pin in the map has always been January, but uh, we really don't know. Um, um, we did the walk around at the uh, 1821 building and uh, Tim very nicely showed us around. And it seems like um, as soon as uh, Eagle Brook gets started on that, um, that will be ready to as an interim library facility. And of course, again, what we do you don't- mean the Eagle Brook gets started on that? That I don't understand what you're talking about. Um, so as I, well, Tim can probably- Talk explain about it later if that's okay. But short version is Eagle Brook basically volunteered to do the work that uh, originally Deerfield Academy had volunteered to do um, to to refurbish it, um, at least to get it usable. Um, let's see. The big thing, um, we had hoped to get a warrant article for the upcoming special town meeting to separate the Tilton Fund from the Tilton, from the Board of Trustees of the Tilton Library which has been an ongoing puzzle. Um, uh, we thought we could get it, but um, the town the town council and select board needed more information than we could provide. And so the town council and the Tilton Fund attorney are talking to each other, which is good. Um, uh, and so with any luck, they will have thrashed that out in time for the spring town meeting so that we can actually finally disentangle the elected library board from the um, Tilton Fund board. Um, and um, let's see. Um, and that's hey, Jim, I have, Jim, I have a question before sure. you move on with that. Last town meeting, it was really annoying. People standing up and talking about that. Who owns a library? You know, so do you guys have an answer for that? And be ready for that because who knows if someone's going to stand up and ask that again. 
Well, our town attorney had the only answer we can give, which is that, of course, the town owns it. I mean, okay. Jesus, if nothing else, the town has had has held it in adverse possession for a century. You know? Right. Well, it's just it's just you know be prepared because it could yeah, happen okay. again, I and mean, it's annoying. Course, I feel like we should actually at some point just stand up at the town meeting and say, "Look, the big secret that we're all covering up is that things were run in an incredibly slapdash manner for a hundred years." You know, <laughs> because that's true. Yeah, that could be um, good. You know? Thank you. Um. There's a suspicious silence, and then there's an embarrassed silence. This is an embarrassed silence. Um, let's see. Um, the most recent figure I could get from Candace for fundraising is 827000 in donations and pledges. Uh, Greenfield Savings Bank recently coughed up a, a $30,000 pledge, which was nice. Um, we're still negotiating. We're still talking with the, the big nonprofits here in town. Um, and I, once they, um, can finalize their pledges, then that we hope that'll kick us up over a million, maybe not, I don't know. Um, going forward, uh, Eric is apparently going to concentrate on businesses, large institutional, potential large institutional donors and large individual donors. So there will not be as many, um, library fundraising events like the ones we've been having, those have been bringing in a couple, of, a few hundred bucks a pop um, and um, have served as much to raise awareness, uh, as, you know, and, and, and generate um, um, interest. Um, but um, in terms of, you know, we would have to have about a thousand fundraising events <laughs> to to cover the remaining uh, uh million dollars um and so that would be an awfully long time um uh so let's see um the architect and project manager contracts uh the town council are still is still going over those so we're still paying them they just it's just out of the goodness of our hearts right now um that's all i've got to report um anybody okay. yeah I, I was just gonna make a comment i think it's interesting i think when greenfield did their library greenfield is a town of approximately or a city of approximately seventeen thousand people and their goal was two million dollars which they easily achieved but they've got larger population and businesses i'm wondering who was their fundraiser Good question. I don't know the answer to that. Well, um, I don't know. Yeah, it would be an interesting conversation to have. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. I mean, the librarians, particularly the library directors, all talk to each other. <laughs> so you know, well, I feel like um, if uh, if they have a really killer fundraiser, you know, if nothing else, um, um, we could probably crib from their list of of donors. Okay. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Jim? I, I do. Yes. I, was, I was wondering about, <clears throat> are there going to be any more public meetings? And has there been a public meeting about the final design? Um, the design that was presented is, as far as I know, Julie, mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, the from here on, it's architects, you know, coming up with the specific, like, structural and, you know. Value yeah. engineering out everything that you like. Yeah, gotcha. Right, okay. but the, the, the footprint is going to look like is what it's going to look like, yeah. Okay. Um, and so no more was... public meetings, really? Pardon? No more public meetings are intended right now? None have been planned that I'm aware of. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Jim, I thought it was really well received, and I think... Um, I think the comments were also, you know I, know, I know there were comments on, I think originally there was, it was going to be white on the outside. And I know we talked about that during the committee meeting and that was changed, which I think was probably a good change, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. It looks like a good design. So I, you know, I didn't know a lot of people to, to object things to, for people to object to. Yep. Well, there's always something. <laughs> okay. Julie. What's going on, Julie? Anything new and exciting? <laughs> no. Uh, so Finance Committee has met and gone through the full warrant and made recommendations. Um, 
and written up a, a recommendation thing that will be presented at town meeting. Um, and building advisory has not met. So that's right. kind of. Okay. Well, well, it'll be an interesting meeting on the 23rd. Okay. Let's see. Wow. Going right through this. Tim. Um, so to, to expand on Jim's comment about the library's temporary space, a couple of things. One is, um, I won't, this group, I should explain that Eagle Brook's in charge of this project. They're basically deciding what they're going to do over there. And they're doing this as a gift to the town. Um, it was a little confusing when we did our tour because um, Dan Pallotta, who's not employed by the town to do anything, or not employed by Eagle Brook, I should say, to do anything, um, sort of inserted himself into this process. So we have to sort of disinsert him. Um, he represents the library and the building of the library. And certainly the architect for the library is, is welcome to, when the, when the space is finished, to come over and design how they want the bookcases to go in and everything. But Dan has no role to play in this. So um, I'm going to talk to Candace about it just to try and clarify that we appreciate Dan's input. But Eagle Brook didn't hire him and doesn't really need him to be involved. So, uh, Jim? So, um, so no part of the um, library's construction budget will go for the 1821 building? It can't be. MBLC sent a letter or an email response to Candace. Uh, so Dan was um, thinking that some money might be able to be used, but MBLC said, no, no way, no how. So it's entirely distinct from the project. So yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, although certainly we want, uh, you know, when the space and probably before the project's finished, we're going to want um, Phil O'Brien, who's the architect for the library, to come in and design the space and, uh, you know, talk with uh, the building committee to see how they want things to go in. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, and the work is, in, in theory, going to start tomorrow, at least the clean out. So um, all these hands up. So I'll start with Lily because she was first. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just trying to get some clarity. So Eagle Brook is going in, cleaning out, and doing structural work. Is that it? Is that why? There, we're, uh, let me give you a rundown of what their plan is. Um, so the lower portion, the fellowship hall, um, it needs to be have an ADA compliant ramp. It needs to have an ADA compliant bathroom. So their plan is to use a space that's currently just an open space, but fits the constraints of ADA, ADA compliance for five foot turnaround space in the bathroom. They're gonna build a ramp that goes pretty much out um, directly to the parking that's next to the sanctuary space. So it's like a 45 or 50 foot ramp uh, that will have a level spot in the middle because ADA compliance is kind of complicated. The roof on the lower structure, the, the, the shingles and everything will be removed and replaced. So there'll be a new roof over the whole space. They will be repainting the interior space. Um, I think their plan is to insulate the, uh, the, the space above the roof, uh, above the uh, ceilings and throughout the space that will be occupied. They're putting in a brand new electrical panel. The plan is to um, totally isolate this space from um, knob and tube, which is sort of interspersed throughout the church building. So they're gonna basically shut off the whole electrical system that is tied into knob and tube and only electrify the space that will be utilized with a brand new panel and brand new wiring. And then they'll repaint, remove all of the, remove all of the, the, the rugs that are in there and um, refinish the floors. There's some nice maple flooring that's really in beautiful condition. And they'll leave the, the wainscoting, which is, you know, stained or varnished or something. It's, uh, that won't be touched. And then they'll fix the front entrance. Um, there are two 
there are two doors in the front of the fellowship hall. The one that they're going to use as the main interest, this was thanks to um, Judy Holmes's comment. Um, it has a roof over it and it's um, got a sidewalk leading up to it. And so there's protection from the elements um, and they won't use the, the door that's sort of right, the sidewalk goes directly to this door, but they will fix, they will fix it as an, as an egress. Um, and then they will replace the door with the, on the ramp with an ADA compliant a door that you can press. Um, and I think that's the bulk of it. Uh, so the library will have an office space in a separate room and there's, they're going to be, Eagle Brook's going to do a load bearing study to determine whether books could potentially be stored there. Not the ones that are going to be given out, but the stacks that, you know, the, the, the books that they're going to preserve for putting back into the library. That's an open question, um, which an engineer will determine. Uh, uh, Andrea and Carolyn, did either of you? So, um, is this the space that Deerfield Academy was supposed to fix for the okay. So what happened to that? And um yeah, okay. was just they were just um too focused on they've got a lot of construction projects going on as you can tell they've got the the ball field they're prepping for building a temporary kitchen to handle the next two years uh, mm -hmm. while they build their and expand their existing, you know, uh, dining facility. Yeah. So basically, they had no bandwidth, and so Eaglebrook um, heard about that and said, "Hey, we can do this." Uh, so. So D so DA basically reneged on the um, on the help that they were offering to the town two years ago. Yes. They were. Yeah. They Three were. years ago. I, I don't I don't want to characterize okay, what I, I, yeah, I, I, something, that was, something my else words. come along in the future. So mm. uh, okay. But this gotcha. is an opportunity to get what you know what we need. Um, and Carolyn, did you have anything? I just want to say this is sort of like the um SCEMS building. The the it's hands off. Eagle Brook is doing it just like DA built the SCEMS building. You can't we're not involved. You can't do anything. So that's why it's important the library step back, select board steps back. It's, you know, until it's done. It's just a donation. Okay, so Tim, I've got a question. So yeah. you said that they're going to put in an electrical panel. So when eventually we can do the sanctuary, can we tie into that electrical panel or is it going to have to be totally redone again? No, probably what will happen is that I mean, it makes sense. It's it's essentially two spaces. So you yeah. have your panel that handles the space that we're fixing, and then yeah. you put a panel. Because if we put solar panels on the sanctuary side, um, we will they'll drop a panel down that handles the uh, direct current into a box, mm -hmm. run it through an inverter, feed it back out into another panel, which would provide electricity to that space, and then a net meter that would be on the outside of the building to sell any excess or put any excess back into the grid. So it's really not not like we're spending money twice. Well, we're not spending money on it anyway. But right, okay. Thank it, you. It would make sense to have separate panels anyway. Yeah, okay. All right, thanks. Any questions for Tim? Anything else to, okay, we'll probably come There's around to- some one other stuff. thing that's related to the church building and, and that's um, Structures North, which is the engineering firm that we had originally finally contracted with to design a, um, <clears throat> to design a fix for a structural defect in the roof of the sanctuary space um, is still not come through yet. So um, I reached out to an engineer in uh, South Deerfield from a recommendation from Vern Harrington, who's on the Tilton Building Committee. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to meet with this person um, on the 31st of October. Um, and anybody who is welcome. Uh, Julia has been up there before and knows this is better than probably I do. 
he wants to go up and physically inspect the space. And um, then if he's available to do the work, uh, then maybe we'll tell Structures North, hey, we found somebody locally and it would make more sense from a standpoint of you don't have to travel here two hours and travel home two hours. I, I think they'd be glad to get rid of the job because they, they really have bigger fish to fry. So hopefully um, Jacob Smith will be able to help us. Um, but that would, once he inspects it, he'll come, come back with a proposal and it, we'll share it with everyone and it'll go before the select board. Thanks for doing that, Tim. That's in, that's been incredibly frustrating. And my final two things, I see MA's hand up. We're working with New Pro. Uh, MA, thank you uh, for bringing this to us, was the home that was, that is currently, it's a red building that's ringed with a fence, has a solar tracking system in the back, which I think is a 12K kilowatt system. Um, but it has some, has some, I guess some of the technology is aged out. So uh, whereas the, the old owner could still use the system, the inverter is no longer legal. So we're working with New Pro to try and acquire this uh, array for no money to possibly install somewhere else like the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility or some other site. Um, MA has been talking with uh, the, the solar store, which is the entity that installed this um, to see about removing the, you know, removing the structure, et cetera. Uh, we don't know that this will all occur, but it would be nice if we got it for free. New Pro, I talked to New Pro's um, attorney and said, that, you know, the New Pro is interested in buying some town land that sort of, you'd think right. it, is th there's a town shed on this land that the DPW uses. So they would like to remove the house and the DPW shed. And I said, well, you know, and then there's a solar panel. So I called the lawyer, thanks again to MA. She gave me the contact information. So new pros council is talking to town council about what all this might, how all this might come about. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's where that is. And is there anything else? Um, I think that's it. Okay, great, thanks. Lily, you're up. Okay. Um, so senior housing's had a lot going on. Um, the We're working on the St. James acquisition and that will be a warrant article. And um, so I won't go into that. There'll be plenty of fun on Monday night. Um, the ANRAD submission to the Conservation Commission um, has not yet been passed or accepted or whatever. The Conservation Commission has requested additional soil testing. And the problem we have is finding a soil scientist to drill the additional holes. But we are on pushing on that and pushing on that because the one the the guy who did the work for um, Berkshire design is going on vacation and saying well then we have to wait till the next spring and it's just too aggravating because we waited forever for them to do it and it wasn't their fault it rained 40 days and 40 nights and 40 days and 40 nights but it's very <sighs> challenging so we're working on that um we had a really excellent public meeting with VHB who developed a number of different scenarios for the site that also included the St. James property. It had really generally very positive public response to the designs. There um, is a, an abutter who is very unhappy um, and his biggest complaint was he felt like he hadn't been communicated enough with. And part of me is like, you know, we post, we do, you know, I don't know what else we can do, but I do understand it too at the same time, because it is very hard 
to know what's going on in this town. So I just raised that. I have no solutions. Um, I told told him that we'd been discussing since last town meeting and stuff like that. But um, so there will no doubt be some interesting conversations on Monday night. Um, we are expecting the final report from VHB, uh, I think by November 1st, right, Denise? They said Halloween. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, a really good thing is that Christine Medor, who is the director, Denise, what's her name? Mass Housing Authority. Mass Housing Authority loves what we are trying to do, has offered to work on the RFP with us. Um, has spoken with us about funding resources, really believes in the municipal campus and and has offered outside of the grant funding <laughs> to help us do this. The other thing that they are um, that we requested from them in this grant was uh, design guidelines for um, consistent um, consistency in the town and stuff. So that's another thing that they'll be producing. Tim, did you have a question? Uh, just a quick addition. Um, the town also had a meeting with Melissa Hoffer to show her the, uh, and maybe Denise is going to talk about this more later, but everybody who hears our plan loves our plan. And now we just have to turn, turn that into the capital. Um, you know, like, like put it in one stop next year when we, when we reapply. <laughs> well, Tony, <laughs> um, we, um, I, I the, Denise and I went to a meeting at Sanderson Place this evening and, and walking out of that, I was walking with the Montague town planner and talking with her. And she just said to me of her own volition, I am so excited about what Deerfield's doing. This is so great. As a planner, it's so wonderful to see a community thinking ahead and thinking about the future and all that stuff. So that was <laughs> encouraging. Um, anyway, so we've got our special town meeting warrant article. We've got to get this ANRAD thing done. Um, we do also want to report out to the CPC on the status of the project and the use of funds because this is such a large project. I think that's an important thing to do. I don't know what usually happens, but we're going to do it. Our next steps are to get the geothermal work done as soon as possible because um, Tim is developing a grant application and I want to, to the specifics of what our consultant's going to do so that we don't go, you know, that so we know what we've got covered and what we need to go get. Right. Jimmy, you have a question? Tim. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, yes. Um, uh, what uh, uh, the development plan, the, the senior housing development would extend from, would extend behind the abutters property at the what what is currently the abutters property? Not not in the current sketch. So, VHB gave us um, three different sketches. Um, two of which did not involve the St. James, but um, but the um part of the contract with um, Berkshire Design Group is to come up with three different um alternatives as well, and. I do not think, don't hold me to it, but I do not think it is likely that the building would go behind the abutters land because then you're hitting the uh, floodplain for Bloody Brook and things like that, which is not really smart building <laughs> in this day and age. So um, it seems unlikely. Because um, that yeah. would make the town campus rather dispersed then. Oh no, it specifically is all connected Landwise, yeah. the plan was to do a I mean, walking path. Physical distance, though, you know, I was yeah. thinking particularly about like for a geothermal system, you know, that's going to mean more pipe. Yeah, yeah, and that's some of the stuff to to think about. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Lily. Any other questions for Lily? Okay, I'll give my report. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to start off with. I guess with the geothermal, um, MA you, called I'm me. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't do my I didn't do my CPC hat. I totally forgot. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, uh, CPC is going to CPC met. Um, oh, 
we didn't meet because the 1888 building um, is not submitting for this special town meeting. I don't know if they're going to be back for the next one. Um, and we will be meeting with Stuart Saganor uh, in November for um, an update on all the current stuff. That's it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Great. Okay. No, actually, I will start off with Melissa Hoffer. I think, oh gosh, I don't know, back in the summertime, M.A., Tim and I met over at Bar's Farm. Uh, M Melissa was invited to do a um, to do a tour of the anaerobic digester over there. So we approached her, gave her a CCI postcard and said, hey, we'd love for you to come out here. And she said, oh, I'm usually free on Mondays. So she did come out, what was it, two weeks ago or something? And she was absolutely great. She wants to be called Melissa. So from the start, that was that was really good. But she was wonderful. And and as Tim said earlier, she said, oh, my God, you know, you guys are great. I mean, she was mimicking, you know, what Jim McGovern basically said or, you know, Joe or Natalie. So she got back to me and, you know, wrote an email and sort of introduced this gentleman, Jonathan Scrake, I've not heard from him yet, and he's a deputy to her, um, Eric Friedman. And then, yeah, so she, so she sent an email. And so she obviously talked to someone over at UMass. So Lauren Madison from UMass then called MA right away. <laughs> so it's sort of been this, this chain reaction, which is, which is really great. It's gotten people talking. And um and then that ties into the grant, the heat grant, which is for $50,000, and that is for the geothermal. So I knew that Lee, that senior housing was, I wasn't sure whether senior housing had the money to do that. So I said, Lee, please talk to Tim. This is great. This is why CCI is great. Um, because does it make sense to do the grant for geothermal borings if, if you're already paying for that? Or would it make better sense to do um, to understand the space of all the different buildings that we want to heat and will the geothermal, would that be a, a big enough, too big a load or would that be adequate? So anyway, so that's, that's sort of going on right now. And I guess I'll have to have another conversation with him about that. But um, I think we'll end up working with Lauren Madison from UMass and also Allison. Is it Allison? Tim, you have your hand up. Do you want you wanted to respond to that? Say, we're actually going to probably focus work with FERCOG on on the application. Okay. But Lauren would write a letter of support for us, and um, Eric, whom you mentioned, is um, in government, um, right. state government. So we're yes. starting to you know get a group of people that are in support of this idea, and particularly Melissa, she loves the idea. As long as it's viable, so we have to decide. Do, I don't think five thousand that CPC has, uh, given the senior housing, is going to do anything for test boring. So we have to figure out uh, in the next week what our pre-application, which is due November first, is going to ask for. Will it be a real engineering study for the space needs that we need to heat, plus some boring? Will it focus on boring? And after we put in our application, apparently. The heat people will talk to us about, you know, how to revise our final application. I've sent an email to the heat folks. They haven't responded yet. So. Okay. Well, if, if they haven't responded, then maybe we can get back to, you know, I could um, send an email to Eric Friedman and say, hey, you know, <laughs> talk to the heat people or something. Lily. Um, yeah, so I went back and I reviewed, I've asked Rachel to get specific deliverables on it, but it's um, what we are getting for $5,000 is a feasibility. So it, it would be um, at the very least, if it's clearly not feasible, we would find out, but I am going to get the actual deliverables and what that means. What are, What's the um, analysis based on? What, what kind of information will it be? So yeah, it will be helpful, <laughs> but you're right. I fear that it will not be all the specific <clears throat> borings and stuff. Right. Okay. Will it be one hole? And, you know, which yeah. tells us nothing about eight acres or 10 acres. 
Well, let's keep the conversation going. Lily, yeah. by the way, do you need to have the, the rest of the soil borings, which I think the uh, the CONSCOM wanted seven more. There's one they wanted seven more because isn't it a 900 foot stretch? So does that need to be done prior to the borings yeah. for the geothermal? They're entirely separate. They have nothing to do with each other. One's looking at um, the water. Uh, right, yeah. Soil Hydrology. Stuff. Yeah. No, I, I, I know there's I know they're separate, but it, it would one inform the other is the question. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. But I think okay. it, it's unlikely that the um, geothermal would run that close to the brook just okay. for uh, maintenance <laughs> alone. Yeah. And stuff. so I think that's they probably wouldn't. It wouldn't. We wouldn't be able to put it that close to the brook, Lily. Right. You, OK. All right. Thanks. Okay, so let's see. Oh, okay. Another thing is that um, so Emma called the other day and and um, sort of introduced the conversation that I had with Chris Curtis. And so Chris, I sort of gave Chris an overview. I said he was welcome to join us tonight, but I'm sure he's busy. Um, an overview of what CCI is doing, and you know, in terms of you know the buildings and solar and geothermal, and you know, just sort of gave him a rundown on that because he is in contact with Matt Mateague, who is the municipal project person for Eversource in Western Massachusetts. So I think, you know, I said, I, said, I just wanna make sure that um, we're not duplicating efforts, you know, time and money. And so I think he was just going to get in touch with Matt and say, hey, Matt, what can Eversource do for us? And I told him, I said, you know, the pilot project they're doing in Framingham, we want that here. We also uh, we also mentioned that to Melissa, too. So, I mean, they're well aware of what we want. We just need money. So, okay. So that's that. Let's see the other thing. Um, there is, I guess we're going to the, the MMA conference again, Mass Municipal Association Conference, and I got an email asking... Um, does anyone want, to, anyone want to apply for these awards? So we are going to apply for an innovation award for Deerfield for CCI. So I started working on that. I got to, I'm working with Tim on that. <laughs> the Tim team. Yeah. So I've got a bunch of, because I, I keep all um, newspaper articles on CCI. So I think I have seven or eight so that we can do as attachments with the postcards and other stuff. So we could possibly have a good chance at that for whatever that's worth i don't know feather but, in our cap. Hmm? a feather in our cap absolutely well, that's great you know I, I would it's every application for every grant yeah, <laughs> yeah. i would prefer cold <laughs> cash but i'll i'll take a feather um, okay deerfield, um, uh, deerfield got the innovative grant for the scams uh 10 years yeah. ago so this no, is good, I mean, Ten years. good. Oh. yeah so you know, we'll we'll try again. Okay. The unfortunate news is that we did not get the community one stop for the eighteen twenty one. So that is was not very good news, and I'm really pretty annoyed about that. So Casey is Casey sent an email yesterday saying, "Hey, can you tell us? You know, give us comments on why? You know, last year when we applied for community one stuff for the eighteen eighty eight. And the comments were, oh, my God, that was such a great application, but it just didn't serve enough of the community. Well, guess what? This one did. So I really don't understand. And I'm getting pretty annoyed. But so we'll we'll see what the comments are and we'll just move forward with that. Um, well, let's see. I think that's about it for me. <laughs> At this point. Oh, but yeah, Tim, I, did we talk about this last time? Tim and I did go in and we 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 hauled all the cushions out from the church into the dumpster, into the the truck, the town truck, and found out that we've re yeah, that was fun. And found out that we really can't. I think people I, I heard a few comments here and there about the pews in the church. Unfortunately, they have lead paint, so they will not be salvageable to my knowledge. So that's, you know, that's something to be determined at a later date at this point. Yeah. So. And following up on that, I did go in both with Cindy Majewski, the town nurse. We spent about three hours um, putting 
outdated needles into sharps containers. Um, because even though they've never been opened, you have to dispose of them properly. Cutting the package open, pouring out the contents. And then uh, I moved a bunch of things into the sanctuary space. And um, Eagle Brook is hoping to go in tomorrow and either start tomorrow just throwing everything out that's in the Fellowship Hall. Carolyn also went through and had uh, her son-in-law help move some things to the front of the sanctuary space that were medical supplies that have potential use later. So it's looking emptier and emptier in there. That's good. Yeah, no, Skip, Skip Yezwinski did a wonderful job. He um, hauled all our EDS supplies that we um, uh, accumulated over the years through mini grants and different grant sources, hauled them all to the front of the building, all our signs, everything. So it was really good. That's great. Hey, by the way, when we were there, Tim, that day, um, there were, I, I forget where the guy was from, but he was doing, he had the drone and he was looking at the roof and the leak in the roof. So is that being addressed now? The, the leak has been fixed. Yeah. And it has. Now, okay. when the, uh, it wasn't in the sanctuary space, it was in the other side, Fellowship Hall right. side. And okay. that's the new roof will solve. Oh, good. All future leaking in that area if there were. Yeah, so, Good. and I, I, the town itself is working in a separate track that doesn't involve what Eagle Brook is doing mm -hmm. uh, to remove um, things from the kitchen. Um, I think that Kevin Scarborough has identified some group or yes. uh, to to take the, the stove and the refrigerator. Um, the thing is, I think they're he thought they could get them out through the doors that are existing, but I don't think so. I, I'm winning a measure to and I have to cut a hole in the wall to get those things out. So yeah. I don't know when that will happen, but it's nice to know that there's a possible future use for this stuff. Um, yeah. camp, uh, the, the camp, camp one, um, you know, the one in Greenfield for the day, um, kids. Uh, yeah. the YCA one? It's like Kiwani or something like that. Kiwani, yeah, I think it's Kiwani. Kiwani. Yeah, it's it's for good. boys and girls. Yeah, that's good, Jim. Tim, those appliances are newer than the building. How did they get in? <laughs> well, maybe they had. Maybe they took them up. They brought them in and assembled them. It's I mean, magic. the refrigerator might go out, but the stove itself. And I've had experience living in a New York City apartment about how big door frames really are, and went yeah. through. A wolf can't get a wolf in, you know. Can't get this in. Ended up with, you know, a counter depth stove that that was beautiful, but yeah, it's it's just big and heavy. So I don't know. Maybe Kevin will have a better solution than cutting a hole in the wall. So okay, when 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 they go in there, they're just instructed just to do that, not to take anything else out. So we don't want to go in and find out that they've thrown out all the dishes and all the. Yeah, just, Eaglebrook is not going in the kitchen. Sure. No, I'm talking about Kevin and his crew. Okay. No, I think they are pretty aware that they're they're just yeah. going to remove these appliances, and um, and then to be determined later whether a kitchen's going back in there or what type of kitchen. Um, so, okay. You know, just, just one last thing before we close down, you know, I, I sort of, mo I monitor social media and I monitor Deerfield now. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's pretty annoying. You know, a lot of the naysayers and most of them I'm sure never go to meetings. They may, they may not go to town meetings, but I think it's really detrimental to the town and what a lot of people are doing. And, you know, at the um, at the VHB meeting, I'm not going to name names, but this gentleman stood up and said, "Well, you know, you know, someone should go around and knocking on everyone's door and telling them what's going on." I'm thinking, you know, what century are you living in, dude? But it's like I think that's pretty. But is there is there a ways, some kind of better way of communication to get to people who are not on social media, who don't you know, listen to meetings. I mean, I know other places have town newspapers. So that's probably a lot to ask, but 
Does anybody have any ideas or can someone post something positive? Why the sidewalks in old Deerfield are cracked, which is the latest and greatest on Deerfield now? Lots of complaints, Carolyn. Um, social media is really fragmented. That's what's different from just a few years ago even, and it gets worse. Yeah. And, and because it's so fragmented, everybody listens to their group and not anything else. So, you know, going to the senior center, um, going to some of those groups that are, you know, separate from, you know, our own no normal social groups. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know what's going on because we go to meetings and we see each other. Um, but honestly, you have to break through somehow you have to figure that out because mostly um, the readership for newspapers doesn't work anymore. Even though we have a local newspaper, Greenfield Recorder, you know, unfortunately, it's very small age group. Um, you know, people get it for the obituaries, really. That's the age group that, <laughs> that you read the newspaper. I mean, it's really. I still get the paper. And that's not what I get it for. I get it for the uh, I know, I know. But I'm just saying if you. Yeah really look at the demographics mm -hmm. and it's not even that so you have to make a point of reaching out to different groups and and yeah. you could go to the library the library has a group school right. community has a group so you got to go to the platforms of the school community well, i know you you keep saying you got to go so we've got to figure out who's got to go and when we're going well, and you have a message when you have a message this is well this i think we got a lot of messages but julie did you have your hand up and then jim I think Carolyn stole my thunder. I was going to suggest that um, Senior has a um, has a, a newsletter that they send out that's apparently pretty well received, and I'm wondering if they would be open to us adding a column to it or something, um, and, and just having town news go in there. And we could do the same thing, like if you're writing that column anyway, then print it in a format that could be a handout. And they send stuff home with the kids all the time from the elementary school. So you just put it in all the boxes in the elementary school. Everybody gets one. Mm -hmm. um, so you got the old end and the young end. And then um, yeah. uh, there's a couple huh. people in the middle. Maybe the library would hit those. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. Jim, I think Jim and then Pam. I was going to suggest that the the town website would be a logical place to have a calendar of events that um people could simply submit articles submit things to it would be a start anyway because it's true and yeah. it is rather unfortunate there is no central clearinghouse for events in town you know i only recently discovered that there's a concert series at the brick church in old deerfield i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> hmm well how about if we all think about it, maybe our next CCI meeting, we could come up with a plan. But Julie, that's, so you said at the elementary school? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we, if we want to get something out, you, you can submit yeah. it. Yep. So Carolyn, who would that, who would we talk to? Talk to Darius about that? Well, I usually talk to Darius, but um, yeah. you can talk to Tina. You can talk to, you know, I mean, you need to we got to do is find out the flow you know when are when are they putting out stuff and then you add in whatever you want to add in so it's just it's what you have to do is do your messaging um and and you and who are who are you targeting you you know general information or whatever i it it's complicated um people mm -hmm. it, and it's not as easy for us because um, you know, the Gazette is is another, you know, some people get the Gazette and the articles mm. now are almost the same, but it's still, it's just really hard. It's very fragmented. And so you have yeah. to just target different groups. Okay. Uh, that, oh, Pam had a comment. Yep, Pam and then uh, Lily, and then we'll wrap things up. Yep. Yeah, Lily and I for the Senior Housing Committee have met a couple of times with um, the women's club because you can reach, you know, like 80 or more households that way. Um, we've also met at this with the senior center. Going there was not all that successful. There frankly weren't that many people there. They also have a newsletter, I think was mentioned, 
but it only goes out every two months. So for example, in, in September, the October, November, I think it was, or anyway, it, it doesn't come out all that often, but it does get mailed out, sent out to some folks who aren't, don't even go to the senior center all that regularly. So there are those ways to reach people as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I offered to email the um, some people at the open meeting that we had who expressed some concerns and have offered to keep them up to date, just the two of them. So I've been sending them um, an email reminding them that this is when the Senior Housing Committee meets. This is how you can um, come on Zoom and participate. Um, so far, I don't think we've had much results, but at least they know they're being thought of. Um, I also, in the latest one, asked them, uh, Lily suggested this, thank you, Lily, that I asked those two people that I'm sending this to, if any of your neighbors or friends have some concerns get their email address to me, I'll add them to this and it'll go out to more people. So, you know, it, it may take a little bit of doing, but th there are ways that, that we can reach folks. I think the idea for the elementary school also, th that that's a whole nother group that that have the potential to be reached. So okay. great. I think that's, that's a great there. idea. All right, Tim, I think you've got your hand up and then we'll wrap things up. It's getting late. Oh wait, I Lily. Had my hand up. I had my hand. Okay, sorry. Lily first. Lily first. <laughs> All right. Um, this had to do with. Um, I think that it sounds like we need a communication subcommittee, which is something that I've been advocating for for a year now. Um, and I think that that would make sense. And what that triggered my thought is, um, I think we need to review the committee membership. We need to find out per, you know, like Tim's problem, like who am I representing now? Uh, and, and we need to get real clarity on that. And we need to address people who don't show up so that they understand that that is their responsibility. I mean, I know everybody's a volunteer, but this is a responsibility that you have accepted and you need to be here. So I would like to propose maybe a an interim meeting before our next meeting with um, just the people who are interested in talking about um, the committee membership, and then we could talk about a communication subcommittee. Uh, Tim and then Julie. I, I was just going to say that um, if we are fortunate enough to hire a planner anytime soon, um, that could be one of their responsibilities is to figure out you know, as the community economic development planner, how to communicate with people on a monthly basis and um, and s also um, how to convince Lily Dwight to he help the town organize a website that's engaging and easy to use <laughs> and doesn't involve, you know, going through 15 pages to find that, that the information you're looking for is not available. Thank you, Tim. That was, yeah, that was good. <laughs> Julie. It's actually a really good segue. I was just going to ask for a quick update on the planner hiring business. Well, um, we have, uh, have identified a candidate, uh, first candidate um, demurred for personal reasons, um, didn't like the focus on grant writing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have identified... <laughs> The candidate that I felt was probably the stronger of the two and um, had a public um, interview with him last week. Um, and uh, Casey's been authorized to um, make him an offer. Hopefully he won't refuse. Um, and um, I, I went to the personnel board last night because we're asking for um, a higher pay grade than what they initially offered, which was I think step one uh, in the F category, which uh, we've, we've determined and found out from conversations with other communities that like everyone else, planners are hard to find. And um, this person was looking, 
was interested in the job, but was looking at a $12,000 pay cut to take it. So mm -hmm. um, we've, re we've resolved that issue and now it's a question of having a conversation. So fingers crossed. Thanks. Great, hey, Tim, a question. Um, do you know, has, has Casey confirmed that she has gotten back to him? She uh, said that she reached out and tried to arrange a meeting Monday, but was there was a select board meeting in the town that he works in and um, he was unavailable. But let's, I'm hoping this week it will occur. Right. And the job offer will be made. All right, Lily. We're pretty excited. Just a, a quick comment if this person doesn't work out. Um, the Montague planner, when I was walking with her, um, she asked how our planner search was going and I said I wasn't up to date but I knew that the first candidate had left and she said if I could make a suggestion I'm a planner and the title that was being offered was coordinator and if you change the title to planner you would get planners applying more planners applying for it so just a thought I know there's like a lot of stuff going into it because you're you're sort of mushing things together but I thought I would share that yeah, we did try to change the uh, the title, but um, Casey pointed out that this description had been written and circulated and um, we couldn't do it um, in this cycle. If we have to go back out, we'll probably want to rethink what we call it. I mean, because planner, you know, grant writing is sort of implied in that, you know, if, if you have an idea, you know, it takes money to do. So you come up with the idea and then you find the financing. Um, so we'll see. <clears throat> All right. So, okay. So Lily, uh, you suggested a communication subcommittee. Uh, do you have any volunteers for that? I'll work on that. Uh, I'll work on it at least to get started. Um, I'm getting committed out. Yeah. <laughs> Since I was I just put like on the MVP committee. Oh, <laughs> I have two oh, yeah. grants that I'm writing right now. So, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. No. I'm yeah. trying to coordinate 14 towns to the road. Well, let's just. Well, I, would, I would make a suggestion that it, that we meet after the special town meeting and and, yeah. and take a breath. But I think that we should have a we should set our next meeting, but that we should have a. a another meeting before that that's specifically to talk about committee membership that um that you know you're not required to attend but we you know so that people feel like it's not more than the monthly meeting but that they they could attend and to me i think we need to figure out who's representing what because there are 21 committees in this town okay and they're no longer all represented uh, and that is a problem that we saw very clearly with the whole school thing and those stupid pickleball courts. I <laughs> know oh, the wonderful, fabulous pickleball courts. So, Lily, Lily, technically, the select board is appointing people. So, does that make sense just to have, you know, maybe a small select board? I mean, Trevor seems to be very busy these days. So maybe it's Carol and Tim, you and me. I mean, I don't know unless other people, you know, want to attend yet another meeting. Um I, mean, I don't uh, I don't care. Yeah, we could do it. We just um we just do that. Tim and I can post a meeting and um you know yeah. let's, let's do that right after the special town meeting just so then we can tee up the select board to because then they'll know who who we need. Okay. So so Carolyn, would that be so you would post that as a select board meeting and then I Lily and I would just attend? Right, because there's no quorum problems with you guys. Okay. Two separate committees. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. All right. So um so why don't we set that date now and then we'll set the next CCI meeting. Okay. okay. So, so when are you guys available? Let me get my calendar. Yes, let me find my brain here. <laughs> Where's my brain? So, um, Wednesday the 25th. Um, 
You don't want to that's, meet. That's fine. Is that, a senior, is that a select board meeting though? No. No. But and this meeting is for what to talk about sub talk about committee participation. Yeah, just to identify yeah. identify holes and yeah. th and and think about who we could recommend because when we were first talking about this, we always tried to find people who were always on like two committees already anyway, so that you wouldn't have 21 people in the, yeah. the meeting. Which um, is unmanageable. Yeah. Okay. So does that work October 25th? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. At, at six? Six is fine. That's fine. 6 p.m. Okay. So then select board will post that meeting. Okay. And then the agenda is membership of the, um, or CCI representation, right? Mm -hmm. of right. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to post it as a work group okay. um, about membership because okay. if you get too detailed then you and, and we get yeah. pulled away somehow, it's just better to do it a little bit general. And are okay. you just going to post that as a remote meeting, Carolyn? Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Great, thanks. Um, so then the next CCI meeting would be. All right, that's another question. Pick a date. Well, when do you think we're going to have some information on stuff? Um, I mean, it's always, it, it's important to have, I mean, yeah, we okay. did, it's disappointing yeah. that we had, we didn't get to see, you know, get the community one stop. But I know. your yeah. meeting tonight was to find out was the result of the community one stop. So who do what do we have next up for um no, well the next step is the heat grant and the next step is you know the innovation which we wouldn't find you know that's not like you know anything. Um it would be probably getting back uh Lily's uh conversation with Alyssa or whoever you're talking to about the uh the geothermal with Rachel. Yeah. yeah. Rachel, and, okay. Yeah. And um VHB is supposed to be giving us okay. their yeah. their findings as well as and, and remember they're supposed to be doing um design recommendations for the, yes. the community as a whole. And that could be actually fun. <laughs> well, right? To to review. Um okay. yeah, we need we need some fun. Okay. Really? So do you want to do it the second week in November? Does that make sense? I'm I'm out of town. Okay. On that That's Monday, okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday we have senior housing. The next Thursday, week six, I'm, seven, eight, or thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I can thirteenth that whole week I'm gone. Oh, okay. The thirteenth, fourteen, fifteenth was I was talking, but what about the seventh? You know, but we don't know. Uh, I think we should give VHB a little more breathing room because remember they yeah, were like, fine. well, we can try to get it by October 31st. So maybe the 21st. Um, Yeah, that works. Uh, that works. Which, which month That's right? no, Thanksgiving. That's Thanksgiving. I don't need about after oh. Thanksgiving at this point. After Thanksgiving. Okay. November 28th. Yeah. I was going to say. We have a SCEMS meeting that night anyway, Tim and I. Oh, uh, what, what time do you have that? So, oh, the SCEMS meeting on the 21st is at 6 o'clock. Oh, oh we're not 20, November 28th. 28th. Okay. Does that work? That's, is that good? 6 o'clock? It's fine. Uh, no, we do 6.30. Typically, oh. 6.30, right. right? Okay. So we're talking November 28th at 6.30. Yep. All right. CCI, and maybe we'll have some new members. Mm. <laughs> you never know. Okay. All right. Motion to close the select board meeting. I will make that motion and we'll second, second. it. All right. Done. Oh, wait. Six. Do so I hear a motion to close? I move that we adjourn our CCI meeting. Second. Second. <laughs> a lot of seconds on that one. All in favor? Aye. Aye.